السلام علیکم دس از ڈاکٹر شیزا ایاز خلجی فرام ڈپارٹمنٹ آف بارنی ڈویژن آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی یونیورسٹی آف ایجوکیشن لاہور اٹ از دی ریمیننگ پارٹ آف دا لیکچر آف بایو جی کیمیکل سائیکلس سو ناؤ آئی ول ڈسکرائب سلفر سائیکل ود لٹل بٹ ڈیٹیل اینڈ آفٹر دیٹ دا لیکچر آف ایئر پولوشن will be conducted. Sulfur is the most significant environmental impact is the result of acid deposition known as acid rain. The half-life of sulfur pollutants is six to 10 days. During this half-life, sulfur pollutants are oxidized to form sulfuric acid, that is H2SO4. This acid then falls to the earth as in the form of acid rain. So the sulfur cycle is basically the collection of processes by which the sulfur moves to and from the minerals, including waterways, and also to the living systems. Such cycles are important in the geology because they affect many minerals. These cycles are also important for life because sulfur is an essential element being an important constituent of many proteins and cofactors. Sulfur cycle is relatively complex because it involves several gaseous species that are poorly soluble minerals and several species in solutions. It is involved with the oxygen cycle that in sulfur combines with oxygen to form gaseous sulfur dioxide, which is called as an atmospheric pollutant and soluble sulfate ions. Sulfur cycle Among the significant species involved are the gaseous hydrogen sulfide, whereas its mineral sulfides are present, such as lead sulfide and sulfuric acid, which is the main constituent of acid rain. The biologically bound sulfur is present in the sulfur containing proteins. There are a few steps of sulfur cycle. First one is called the mineralization. It involved the organic sulfur into its inorganic form, such as hydrogen sulfide, elemental sulfur, and sulfide minerals. The second step in the sulfur cycle is the oxidation. That is oxidation of this hydrogen sulfide, sulfur and, and elemental sulfur to the sulfate ions. Third step in the sulfur cycle is the reduction. That is reduction of sulfate, SO4, to the sulfide. Incorporation of sulfide into the organic compounds, which includes metal containing derivatives. Here you can see how the sulfur is released, utilized by the plants, animals in our ecosystem. If you look at the sulfate ions, these are easily 
uptake by the plant roots for the growth and development of the crop. When the crop has been harvested, these sulfates are released as in the form of sulfur dioxide gas that has been present in the plant residues in the form of organic sulfur. Whereas mineralization, immobilization, oxidation has been carried out by the various bacterial oxidation processes and bacterial reduction. As a result of weathering, sulfate ions are also produced by the plants. The atmosphere, in the atmosphere, it has been deposited in the form of sulfate ions. If we talk about the plant residues and the animal manures, which are used as biosulf, biosolids, they also produce a organic form of sulfur, which undergo the mineralization process to produce the sulfate ions. These sulfates have been leached down to form the mineral formation, and these are further undergo oxidation reduction processes to produce the reduced sulfur hydrogen, sulfite, and the elemental sulfur, from where it undergo the process of volatilization that result in the release of atmospheric sulfur, which can be again utilized by the plants. In the mineral forms, sulfate ions are converted as mineral fertilizers. And in this way, the whole cycle of sulfur is going to happen in our ecosystem. How the sulfur cycle flow? The sulfur cycles contains both terrestrial and atmospheric processes. Within the terrestrial portion, they undergo weathering of rock. They have a direct contact with the air to convert these sulfate ions, which has been taken up by the plant and microbes that will convert these sulfate ion into the organic forms of sulfur, which are finally be eaten by the animals. And these are released into our ecosystem in the form of sulfate ion. And in this way, the sulfur cycle is continuously forming all the processes of mineralization, oxidation, reduction, and incorporation to our ecosystem. Here I can explain the animation for the sulfur cycle that, in, that includes both gases and solids. So there are certain limiting factors in an ecosystem. I will talk about all the abiotic factors. So Limiting factors are those in which any abiotic factor limit the survivability of organisms in a particle ecosystem is called as a limiting factor. For example, water in the desert, light is the deepest part of the ocean, and abyssal and benthic zones, etc. So this abyssal zone is a layer that contains the very deep benthic communities near the bottom of the ocean. Like this is all the benthic zone at the bottom of the ocean. These zones are defined as the bottom sediments and other surfaces of a body of water such as an ocean or the lake. All the organisms living in this zone are called as benthos. Whereas basal zone is a layer that contains very deep benthic communities near the bottom of the ocean. So 
as limiting factor that limit the survivability of organism in a particular ecosystem. For example, if you see in the picture of desert, there is no water or water is considered to be as the limiting factor. And same is within the above picture where two zones of the deepest part of the ocean are present. And they are only represented by the some organisms which are called as benthos and they are not visible because they are present at the deepest part of the ocean. So population dynamic is the branch of the life sciences that studies the size and age composition of population as the dynamical system and biological and all the environmental processes driving them such as birth and death rates by means of immigration and emigration. So if it can be defined as a population in which the number of individual in one particular species in a particular place at the given time period. For example, the population of zebras in Kenya in the year 1980. But now that population of zebra current in the current year has been lost. Only few species of zebra are left. So this will show their population dynamics. Population density is the number of organisms per unit of land area or the ocean volume. So these both terms are directly related if we talk about ecology or the ecosystem. With this, all the biochemical cycles, including various essential nutrients, which are required by the plants and the animals, including allobiotic and abiotic factors, has been explained in the detail. So our next topic is called as air pollution. Air pollution is a mixture of solid particles and gases in the air. Major sources are car emissions, chemical from the factories, dust, pollens, and mold spores may be suspended as particles. Ozone, a gas, is a major part of the air pollution in the cities. When a zone forms air pollution, it is called as smog. So some air pollutants are toxic and they are called as poisonous. So in case of air pollution, the major sources are car emission and chemicals from the industries, factories. And in response to these sources, there are all negative effect of air pollution in terms of ozone gas and the smoke and the various toxic air pollutants. So air, if we, if we define the term air, so we can say that the invisible gaseous substance surrounding the earth that is the mixture of mainly oxygen and nitrogen. Or in other words, we can say that all the oxides of nitrogen and oxygens are responsible to create air pollution. It mostly occur when the air contains gases, dust, fumes, or other in the harmful amounts. If air pollution is present, then it can be extended up to the safe limits when all the gases will become high in concentrated form. 
They will exceed all the safe limits that has been set up by the NEQS, National Environmental Quality Standards, and the EPA department of the government. So we can say that it is an undesirable change in the physical, chemical, or biological characteristics of the air. Air pollution is caused due to an increase in the content of harmful substances in the air, such as oxides of sulfur and nitrogen. If we talk about wind in the air pollution, it is the flow of gases on a larger scale. On the surfaces of Earth, wind consists of bulk movement of air. In the outer space, solar wind is the movement of gases and charged particles from the sun through the space. while planetary wind is the outgassing of light chemical elements from the planet atmosphere into the space. So air pollution is said to exist if the level of these gases, solids or liquids present in the atmosphere are high enough to harm the humans, other organisms or materials. The air, may become polluted by the natural causes such as volcanoes, which releases ash, dust, sulfur, and other gases, or by the forest fires that are occasionally naturally caused by lightning processes. Today, human activities are responsible for most of the air pollution. Types of air pollution. There are mainly two types of air pollution. First one is called as outer air pollution. It comprises of smog, particulate matter in the form of particulates, acid rain, and all the greenhouse gases. So smog is a kind of air pollution originally named for the mixture of smog and fog in the air. Classic smog results from the larger amount of coal burning in an area and is caused by mixture of smog and oxides of sulfur in the form of sulfur dioxide. In 1950s, a new type of smoke was first described, which is called as photochemical smoke. The second sources of outdoor air pollution are the particulates. They are also known as atmospheric aerosol particles Atmospheric polluted particulate matter, which has been represented by a capital PM, or suspended particulate matter, are microscopic particles of the solid or liquid matter, which is suspended in the air. air. Third source of the outdoor air pollution is acid rain. It is the rain or any other form of precipitation that is usually acidic, meaning that it has elevated levels of hydrogen ion at the low pH. It can have harmful effect on the plants, aquatic animals, and infrastructure. Acid rain is caused by emissions of sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide, which react with the water molecule in the atmosphere to produce acids. The second type of air pollution is the indoor air pollution that occur mostly when the buildings are 
poorly designed with poor ventilation system in which pollutants has been trapped inside. So there are many causes of air pollution. We can categorize them into the natural sources and anthropogenic sources of air pollution. The anthropogenic sources may include power plants, automobiles, fumes, burning, wood stoves, fireplaces, and furnaces. Whereas natural sources, that the smoke mostly comes from the wildfires, volcanic eruption, production of methane gas, and various dust particles. So basically, these are the main two causes of the air pollution. So air pollutant is a pollutant which has been released as a result of air pollution is any substance in the atmosphere that is, li that is likely to cause harm to the human, plant, or animal life. So the damage to the man-made material and structures that change in the weather or climatic condition that interfere with the enjoyment of life and property. So as we know that weather is the state of the atmosphere, at the particular place and time as regards heat, cloudiness, dryness, sunshine, wind, and rain, etc. So do not confuse with these two terms. There is a little bit difference. If we talk about the climate, it is the long-term average of the weather, typically averaged over a period of 30 years. Some of the meteorological variables that commonly measured are temperature, humidity, atmospheric pressure, wind, and precipitation. So in a broader sense, a climate is the state of the component of the climatic system, which includes ocean and ice on the earth. The climate is always located and is affected by its latitude. And all these changes or all these causes may interfere with the enjoyment of life and property. So there are two types of pollutants, point sources and the non-point sources. So known point sources of the pollution miss are those open area which are exposed to the wind directly. For example, the, along the construction site are a large number of the smaller sources. So they may also include excess fertilizers, herbicides, insecticides from the agricultural lands and residential areas, oil, grease, and toxic chemicals from the urban runoff and energy production. These sediments from improperly managed construction sites, crop and forest lands, and eroding stream, ba stream banks. So these are all called as known point sources of air pollution. A point source of the pollution is the single identifiable source of air, water, thermal, noise, or the light pollution. A point source has a negligible extent, distinguishing it from the other pollution sources. For example, non-point sources, etc. 
So air pollutant is a substance in the air that adversely affect human beings, particularly the ecosystems. They can be categorized into two types of pollutants, primary pollutants and secondary pollutants. So primary pollutants are the harmful chemicals that lead to the atmosphere directly from the source. Carbon oxides, oxides of nitrogen, sulfur, and many volatile organic compounds in the form of hydrocarbons are suspended particulate matter are the examples of the primary air pollutants. Volatile organic compounds, which are mostly called as VOCs, are the compounds that easily become vapors or the gases. These are released from burning the fuels such as gasoline, wood, coal, or natural gas. Secondary air pollutants are those which are produced by the chemical reaction involving the primary pollutant. So in the most simplified form, we can say the secondary pollutant are those that are formed by the reaction of primary pollutants. For example, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, nitric acid, HNO3, mist, smog, and ozone. Here, what is mist? It is a phenomenon caused by the small droplet of water suspended in the air. Physically, it is an example of a dispersion. It is most commonly seen when the warm, moist air meets sudden cooling, such as an exhaled air in the winter or when throwing water into the hot stuff of a sauna. Smoke and ozone, I have already explained in the previous slides. So basically, there are four to five major air pollutants. If the concentration of these pollutants exceeds, then there are safe limits, they are considered to be the toxic. So major air pollutants, first one is called carbon monoxide. It is released when the engine burns fossil fuel, mostly in the cars, Emissions are higher when the engines are not tuned properly and when fuel is not completely burned. Cars emit a lot of the carbon monoxide found outdoors. Furnaces and heaters in the home emit a very high concentration of carbon monoxide too, if they are not properly maintained. So these are the major sources of the air pollutant, including burning of fossil fuel, cars, furnaces, and heaters in the home. Effects, carbon monoxide make it hard for the body parts to get the oxygen the need to run correctly. Exposures to the carbon monoxide makes people feel dizzy and tired and gives them headache. At high concentration, it is considered to be fatal. And elderly people with the heart diseases are hospitalized more often when they are exposed to the higher amount of carbon dioxide. So here, 
Dizzy. Dizziness is a term used to describe a range of sensations such as feeling faint, woozy, weak or unsteady. Dizziness that create the false sense that you and your surroundings are spinning or moving is called as vertigo. So dizziness is the term showing the sensation, your feeling of faint, weak, or unsteady condition. Second most important air pollution is the sulfur dioxide that mostly comes from the burning of coal or oil in the power plants. It is a corrosive gas that cannot be seen or smelled. It smells at high level, is called as rotting egg. So the major sources of the sulfur dioxide are the burning of coal or oil in the power plant. It also comes from the factories in the form of chemical, paper, or fuel industry, like nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide react in the atmosphere to form acid rain and particles. The most common effects of sulfur dioxide are asthma or emphysema. So emphysema is the lung condition that causes shortness of breath. In people with emphysema, the air sacs in the lungs are damaged. Over time, the inner wall of the air sacs weaken and rupture, creating larger air spaces instead of many smaller ones. So the next effect which is caused by the nitrogen oxide is they harm the trees, particularly the crops. It can also irritate people's eyes, nose, and throats. Sulfur dioxide can harm the trees, crops, damaging the buildings and make it harder for the people to see long distances. Here you can see, due to the sulfur dioxide, the lungs are mostly affected and the people feel the condition of emphysema. The third is the third major air pollutant is called as nitrogen dioxide which is a reddish brown gas that comes from the burning of fossil fuel. It has a strong smell at high levels. The sources may include from the power plant and cars. It is formed in the two ways. First one, when it is produced as a fuel burning and the second one, when it reacts with the oxygen at very high temperature. Nitrogen dioxide can also react in the atmosphere to form ozone, acid rain, and particles. High level of nitrogen dioxide exposure can give people coughs and can make them feel short of breath. People who are exposed to the nitrogen dioxide for a longer period of time have higher chances of getting respiratory infection. They also feel wheezing. So, wheezing is a condition. Course where a coarse whistling sound is produced when you breathe. 
Many people with respiratory allergies know that wheezing often comes with hay fever season. It may also happen because of respiratory infections like acute bronchitis. And this acute bronchitis and asthma are the most common causes of these wheezing. A number of treatment can ease wheezing. So the second most important effect of the nitrogen dioxide is the acid rain. As I have already explained in detail about acid rain, that is negatively impacted all the plant and the animals. Another one major air pollutant is called as particulate matter. So they are present in the form of solid or liquid matter, which is suspended directly in the air. To remain in the air, they may wear it less than 0.1 millimeter wide and they are as small as 0 0.005 millimeter in diameter. Two major types of coarse particles are particulate matter are number one coarse particles that may include the road dust, sea sprays and construction And another one are called as fine particle. When fuel is burned in the automobiles and power plant factories. So effect include directly affect the lungs and cause severe health problems. People's affected show asthma, they have direct effect for creating respiratory problems, early or premature deaths, and they are also associated with the many heart and lung diseases. So by inhaling these major particulate matter, they directly affect their lungs and creating problem for acute bronchitis in the alveolar duct. So they are categorized according to their size. Larger particulate matter size is the TSP, that is total suspended particles. They are sized between 20 to 50 micrometer. If they are less than 10 micrometers, they may be called as PM10, that may reach the upper part of the airways and lungs. Particulate matter of 2.5 micrometer are smaller, are regarded as most dangerous because they penetrate more deeply into the lungs and they may reach the alveolar region. So these are considered to be very toxic. There are also some particulate matters that are in ultra fine structure and they are present with the aerodynamic diameter of 0.1 micrometer or even smaller. So this table showing the particular matter standards in the Asia according to their size. So the next major air pollutant that comes in the category of Air pollutant is called as greenhouse gases. So a greenhouse gas is a gas that absorbs and emits radiant energy within the thermal infrared range. They cause greenhouse effect 
on the planets. The primary greenhouse gases in the Earth's atmosphere are water vapor, H2O, carbon dioxide, CO2, and methane. So these greenhouse gases act as a glass in the greenhouse. So these gases act as a glass. These gases stay in the air for a longer period of time and warm up the planet by trapping sunlight. This effect is called as greenhouse effect because the glass in the greenhouse act as a shield or a filter. Some of the important greenhouse gases I have already described, including carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. The sources, for example, carbon dioxide, it is called as the most important greenhouse gas that comes from the burning of fossil fuel in the cars, in the power plants, in the houses, and in the industry. Methane is released during the processing of fossil fuel and also comes from the natural sources like cows and rice paddy fields. Nitrous oxide comes from the industrial sources and by decaying of plant, it may enter into the soil where it becomes available for the grazing animals. The greenhouse effect can lead to changes in the climate of the planet Earth. Some of these changes might include a high temperature, extremes, higher sea level, concentration, changes in the forest composition, and damage to the land near the coast. Human health might be affected by the diseases that are related to the temperature, or by damage to the land and water. So major effects of air pollution are two. First one are called as human effect that are badly affecting the health of human being in the form of various diseases, particularly the lung and heart disease. Environmental effect, I have already explained. Oxides of sulfur and nitrogen are present to create more severe pollution that combine within the water to form the acid rain. Eutrophication, excessive richness of nutrient in a lake or other body of water frequently due to the runoff from the land, which causes a dense growth of plant life or the algae. His is the slight obscuration of the lower atmosphere typically caused by the fine suspended particles. Wildlife is badly affected by the negative impact of air pollution. Ozone depletion is a major environmental problem because it increases the amount of UV radiation that reaches the Earth's surface, which increases the rate of skin cancer, eye cataracts, genetic and immune system is completely damaged. Crop and forest damage. Crop, vegetation and forest are completely damaged by these negative impact of the air pollution in our ecosystem. How? Because when they accumulate in the upper atmosphere, air pollutants can cause a protective ozone layer depletion. As a result, forest, crops, and vegetations are subjected to the much higher rate of these harmful and toxic UV radiation. So how the global climate change is affected by the air pollution? As the climate change means the difference in the Earth's global climate or in the regional climate over time. This climate change is about abnormal variation to the climate 
and the effect of these variations on other parts of the Earth. Examples may include melting of ice caps at the South Pole and North Pole. Impacts of air pollution. Climatic system is totally damaged. Health of people is affected. Economy of the world has been lost. All over the environment has been negatively impacted in terms of various points that I have already explained in the previous slide. And overall ecosystem of the environment in terms of forestry has been damaged. Agriculture related problems may occur due to the air pollution. So what are the main causes and effects of indoor air pollution? Pesticides, mosquito repellents, cleaning agents, they are used in the household, they can cause toxic conditions. Building material like asbestos, glass fiber, paints, glues, varnishes are all health hazards. They can cause irritation of skin and eye, respiratory ailments and cancer. We all know there are CFCs in the room air condition in offices. CFCs are the chlorofluorocarbons. They are damaging our health because the sealed space in the air condition accumulate various contaminants which are released by air. Smoking is another most dangerous effect of air pollution. It affects both the smoker as well as those who do not smoke. The common pollutant in the urban interiors are cigarette smoke, gases from the stoves, formaldehyde, from carpets, furniture, pesticide spray, and various cleaning agents which are used for the household purposes. And one of the major source is from the ozone, which has been released from the photocopies. In rural areas, indoor air pollution is taking a tool on the health of women. आपने देखा होगा कि कभी पुराने जबानों में जो है विलेज में लोग लकड़ियां जला के या एनिमल वेस्ट जिसको कहते हैं गोबर गोबर से आग जला के वो अपना कुकिंग वगैरह करते थे सो कैन यू इमेजिन हाउ अ वुमेन इज इनहेलिंग टू मच अमाउंट ऑफ दीज पॉइजनस गैसेस और अगर इस तरह से बात की जाए तो देर अकॉर्डिंग टू अ सर्वे This is equivalent to smoking 100 cigarettes per day. Yani itni zyada ek woman inhale karti hai jab wo cow dung or animal dung spew ko jalati hai for their traditional cooking too. So there are certain causes and effect of outdoor air pollution. Burning of fossil fuel in the automobiles, power station, chemical, metal, and paper industries. Mining activity is leading to dust as well as fires. आप देखें कभी हम खेड़ा माइन में जाते हैं तो वहां पे हर वर्कर ने अपने आप को एक मुकम्मल तौर पे इनक्लोज किया होता है इन द फॉर्म ऑफ पैक्ट कंडीशन बिकॉज ऑफ माइनिंग माइनिंग क्यों क्या है माइनिंग माइनिंग इज जिस जितनी वो तोड़फोड़ करते हैं उधर पत्थरों की या मिनरल्स की उसके रिजल्ट में लॉट ऑफ डस्ट हैज बीन प्रोड्यूस इन दैट एरिया और फायर जो वहां पे लगाई जाती है उसकी वजह से जितने भी पार्टिकल्स रिलीज होते हैं एयर में वो एयर पोल्यूशन का बायस बनते हैं और नेचुरल इमिशन जो कि एनिमल के डिकेन की वजह से ऑर्गेनिक मैटर की रिजल्ट के फॉर्म में प्रोड्यूस होती है उन सारों की रीजन है इन दी आउटर एयर पोल्यूशन बर्निंग ऑफ बायोफ्यूल ट्रॉपिकल रेन फॉरेस्ट हर तरह की हर तरह का वेस्ट जिसमें आ जाता है सॉलिड वेस्ट लिक्विड वेस्ट सीवेज स्लज इंडस्ट्रियल वेस्ट होम वेस्ट डोमेस्टिक वेस्ट सीवेज वेस्ट म्यूनसिपल वेस्ट और जिस तरह के बहुत बड़े बड़े डिजास्टर्स हैं लाइक विलखेन और अपशन अर्थक्वे और कोई भी फेस्टिवल हो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इंडिया में जिस तरह दिवाली मनाई जाती है तो वहां पर हर घर में जो है दिया जलाया जाता है या इस तरह से वो 
दिवाली से दिवाली के दिन पूजा करते हैं तो उसमें जिस तरह का स्मोक प्रोड्यूस होता है वो सारा एयर पोल्यूशन को प्रोड्यूस करने में क्रिएट करने में हेल्पफुल होता है डस्ट सॉन्ग कभी बहुत ज्यादा तेज आंधी आ जाती है और उसकी स्पीड इतनी ज्यादा होती है दैट इज अबाउट थाउजेंड ऑफ किलोमीटर अवे तो उस स्पीड की वजह से सारी एयर पोल्यूशन कॉज होती है इसके अलावा मेजर सोर्सेज में इंडस्ट्रीज ऑटोमोबाइल्स हैं जो कि आउटर एयर पोल्यूशन को स्प्रेड करने में मेन कंट्रीब्यूटर है इन आवर वर्ल्ड इसके अलावा लेड जो है उसको पेट्रोल के अंदर जो लेड यूज किया जाता है टू प्रिवेंट द नॉकिंग ऑफ इंजन इट इज एक्सट्रीमली पॉइजनस और अगर ये इसकी कंसंट्रेशन एक ह्यूमन बॉडी में ज्यादा हो जाए लेड की तो इट विल रिजल्ट इन द पैरालिसिस ब्लाइंडनेस एंड इवन डेथ भी इसे कंसीडर होती है देन ट्रक्स एंड बसेस दे रन ऑन द डीजल व्हिच हैज हाई सल्फर कंटेंट सो ओल्ड इंजन इमिट वास्ट क्वांटिटीज 